get your hands on a gym and tonic GT box. Enter the promo code BLACKINK for an exclusive 10% discount on your order. Gym and Tonic, sustainable urban gin. Hi, Amon. Thank you for joining us on Black Ink Cinema Podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no worries. Absolutely love your work. And before we get into your amazing film choice we just wanted to get to know you a little bit better and I know you're an editor at the Empire magazine the world's biggest movie magazine um so tell us a little bit about what that entails yeah so I just got made contributing editor at Empire magazine a little while ago um I just got made contributing editor at Empire magazine a little while ago uh, and also got given my own column on uh, black cinema which is going to be a thing going forward I which I love by the way yeah, no, nah, it's it's really um, great that they went with that. Um, you know, one of the things that sort of went into me pitching that is because we're in a worldwide racial reckoning right now. Yes, and I've yes. been trying to think about how I can use my platform to speak on what's going on and try to affect change. Because I've been feeling a little bit hopeless in that regard, uh, just seeing what everyone, what everything's just seeing everything that, that that's been happening and not really feeling like I'm doing enough, not really feeling like the retweets would, weren't doing it, the mm-hmm. uh, donations weren't doing it. It's like, what can I do mm-hmm. to make sure that this is in the, is at the forefront uh, in a regular way? Um, because this is not a moment, this is a movement, and we can't just do one thing after a big thing happens and then not talk about it. And that is where, and that is a big reason why... Uh, that, that that's a big part <laughs> the the column is what manifested from all of that i guess yeah. um but uh yeah uh it's you know p- a big part of the reason why you know i'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna, we're, we're gonna get to that i'm jumping ahead um <laughs> but um yeah I, i've been doing stuff for empire for the last the couple of years or so since 2018 um uh, doing podcasts and news bits and reviews and stuff um but it's really sort of good to uh get that title um, and sort of have the acknowledgement of of the good work, the work that I've been doing over the last couple of years from uh, my peers and my colleagues has been really, really gratifying and I'm I'm very, very happy about that. Um, But yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a bit of a journey to get here. I've I've been doing this for nine years um, and I've done sort of every permutation of part-time job, full-time job with this, with that. I've thought Mm -hmm. about quitting many, many times or all that sort of stuff because this freelance film is, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the last sort of couple of years or so, it's really clicked in a good way. And uh, the Empire thing is sort of the latest um, sort of signifier of that. So yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's awesome. And I think you really um, spoke on something there about, especially this year, kind of feeling helpless or deflated as a Black person and kind of figuring out what I can do or you can do in our own little way to kind of help or bring some sort of light to the dire situation we kind of always feel that we're in and I I say that to everyone about finding your own little way of protesting and um and this is a way and I I love it I'm here for it um as a black critic I'm sure especially this year do you feel like there's a few films that went under the radar that were passed that maybe um people missed because of what's been going on I think Miss Juneteenth is one mm-hmm. that people should really, really check out. Um, I thought that film was fantastic. I loved um, it. It's so good, right? It's mm, so but I good. love and Nicole. I think she's, apart from being absolutely stunning, um, I thought it was just such a lovely story told. Um, and only recently visiting New Orleans kind of got that whole like um, cowboy-esque thing that black people yeah, put yeah. up there it's a very strange thing to see it's not something that I was used to seeing but there was a whole heap of black cowboys uh, and girls and um yeah so it kind of took me back there yeah yeah no I would love to visit New Orleans I've heard really great things I've heard the food is amazing um, oh. but <laughs> oh, <laughs> so uh so yeah um but I really like that film I actually managed, I actually got to talk to the director for that film oh, a little cool. bit, which is great. Um, Clemency is a film that only came out in the UK this year, but it's yeah. another fantastic film. And Alfred Woodard is somebody mm. who has been doing fantastic work for a very long time. Yeah. Um, 
and she is just incredible in that movie. The fact that she wasn't Oscar nominated last year is an utter travesty. I feel the same way about the Peter Nyong'o's performance in Us. The fact that that performance wasn't nominated is a travesty. Oh, and I, I mean, I, I don't think Renee Zellweger is bad in Judy, but there is no way anyone can see us and see Clemency and tell me that Renee is better than Lupita and Alfred in those films. It's just, it's just not the case. Um, so, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, um, as I say, Clemency only came out this year, but that thing's really good. In terms of recently, uh, mm. I watched a film on Netflix called Vampires vs. the Bronx, which I thought was very, very fun. Oh, and, I love, yes. Um, I, yeah, I love that. I love the spin on that, especially... I love this whole like new black people getting into horror where we're actually making it throughout the whole film. I'm here for that. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here for that because I love a good horror. And, you so, know, I think one of the things that put me off when I was younger is that we would always just die. And it's like, first of all, we're the smartest people. We're not trying to go down that alleyway or open that door oh. or put ourselves in stupid. Situations. No, we're off. So it never made sense. It never made sense to me. <laughs> it's, it's like you're taking all the words out of my mouth. It's, it's exactly right. It's exactly right. I am for me, like you know, horror films are not typically my jam. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to be a brave little boy and watch <laughs> some of these films. Um, so uh, obviously, Vampires vs. the Bronx was fine because it's more of a horror yeah. comedy. But yeah. I watched His House recently, and I... that film messed me up. Um, <laughs> to you I had to pause because I started yeah. watching it at night and I was like um yeah this is not the right time when like these sort of horrors need to be watched during the day in broad daylight <laughs> where I've got time to, to get it out of my system I can't watch that before I go to bed no it's not it's not gonna work <laughs> I literally said the exact same thing on the Empire podcast recently when we reviewed it well I tried to watch it during during the night no. I got 10 minutes in I was like nope I like no. sleep I value sleep if I want sleep I yeah. need to watch this at a different time. So yeah. I watched it in the daytime. <laughs> the light was coming into the window. The were open. The exits were in clear view. <laughs> yeah. And I managed to enjoy the movie, uh, even though I was watching, still still watching a bit of it through my eyes, because again, oh, it's a scary ass movie. Yeah. Um, but but um, but the, the beautiful thing about that movie is that as you say, you know, black people were smart. You know, if we see something creepy going on we're normally oh. like give me the keys rose i'm out of here cool. Bye. <laughs> yeah exactly but, <laughs> I love but that. his house <laughs> is smart and that it gives you a believable reason why they would want to try and make a go yeah. of it um yeah. so they ground it in that immigrant experience and you know the, the commentary on that is really really great mm. um and then on top of everything else the performances are fantastic and I it's mean, a really good I love those house too. movie yeah, yes. I love I love them too. Her in Lovecraft. I don't know if you've seen yeah. Lovecraft Country, and him in um, Gangs of London, of course. Right. Um, yeah. And I just so together, I was just like, yes, this is <laughs> I'm loving yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like a joy to see black people using their traditional accents as well, and talking how you know how how we know that our family can talk when we get that all the family uncle, to see that on screen is just such a rare thing. <laughs> So yeah. I always appreciate that when I see that too. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I guess in, in recent times, those, those are the movies, that, those are the black led movies that have really mm. sort of uh, made an impact on me. Yeah, definitely. And I totally agree with that. If people wanted to follow you on Instagram, Twitter, what's your social media handles? Yeah, so on Twitter, I'm at a woman. Uh, on Instagram, I'm a mom woman. And on Facebook, I'm a mom woman again. Lovely. I job. don't really use Facebook that much. <laughs> I mean, it's there because it's like the oldest. It's like, you know, part of the family exactly. now. You can't let it go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right, yeah. So we're here to celebrate all things black cinema. And you chose one of my, I really enjoy this film every time I watch it. And I see something new every time. Um, and it surprised me as well as someone who loves a bit of Marvel. Um, but Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse with an amazing cast led by Shamik Moore. Why did you pick this movie? Oh, so many reasons. <laughs> so many reasons. I, I think it's a masterpiece. Um, and it's just interesting um, in, in terms of the year it came out because I am a massive super nerd. Um, mm. I know some of my comics, I know my cartoons. Mm. I know Spidey Inside Out. I, <laughs> I, I, I loved Miles Morales before. 
before the film even came out, I'd been mm-hmm. sort of reading the comics and everything else, and I'd really taken to him as a character. Mm-hmm. But that year really was all about two superhero movies for me, Black yeah. Panther yeah. Mm-hmm. and Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. And I love both of those movies. Black Panther, obviously, landmark movie in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just, I remember, <laughs> when it comes to Black Panther, I remember being at the UK premiere for that movie. Oh, here we go. And, Let's rub it and, in. That wasn't intentional. It wasn't I'll intentional. No, it's all right. <laughs> you actually got that in there. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I always, I always, I always don't, don't want to speak to it anymore. I now, would but too. I want to tell don't worry. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was at the UK premiere for that movie. I'm not sure if I told you that, but I was. Um, I know now. And <laughs> and typically, when I go to film screenings, and again, I've been doing this for nine years. Most of the time, I go to the film screen. I look around the room. I'm like one of maybe three black people in the room. Maybe. And typically, you give them I'm the, the look. One. Say again. You give them the look, like, you know. <laughs> I give them the look internally because I'm nice Oh, yeah, like it's that. an internal, but they yeah. feel it, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, but that premiere, it felt like every Black person in London <laughs> had to send in on the Hammersmith Apollo just for that <laughs> night. And, oh my God. I mean, I, I, I went in traditional Nigerian gear, <sighs> there were people in traditional Ghanaian gear, the, the, the hairstyles, the mm-hmm. cosplay. Everybody was there. I mean, just the just the mere sentence that before the UK premiere of a Marvel movie, they had a DJ playing "Man's Not Hot," and everyone vibing to "Man's Not Hot." I'm not, I've, I mean, I've never been so jealous <laughs> in my whole life. Apart from that whole lead up, the whole Black Panther thing, oh. I did my own little personal screening for it because as much as <laughs> I didn't know how big it was going to be, for me it was like something I'd waited for my whole life. Like I'd waited. Yeah. For a movie like this to be to have a celebration of black culture African culture and not to be shown in a negative light so I remember exactly. putting this on and people were like why did you do this and I was like because it's the first film celebrating me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay exactly. it's an uncolonized black people and we're superheroes like how can I not you know and so when yeah. I saw that I was like I just want to be there I just want to be with my people celebrating <laughs> and really enjoying this moment Exactly, exactly. So I love Black Panther. I love Avengers Infinity War. I still maintain that Thor coming to Wakanda is the best scene in the MCU, <laughs> bar none. I literally, I'm not, I, I mean, my sister is sick and tired of it because I play it loud all the time, but <laughs> I, I, I have watched that Thor Wakanda scene. It's brilliant. It's, in, it's, 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 it's nearing five figures now. I, and I can't get enough of it. I can't get enough of it. It's my favorite scene in the MCU. Anytime I'm feeling down, anytime I'm having a bad day, I can yeah. watch that for 30 seconds and I just smile. Just like, you know what? That's awesome. So I love both of those films. And as mm-hmm. such, my hype for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was it even that high compared to them? Like my yeah. hype for Black Panther was here. Yeah. My exactly. hype for Infinity War was here. Spider-Verse yeah. was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll watch that. And I remember that screening as well because the day beforehand, the worldwide embargo had dropped on reviews. And um, the US reviews had come out and said that, oh, Spider Verse is amazing, some masterpiece. Well, so I'm like, really? Yeah, I don't know. You, so I went yeah. to the screening, I was like, I, I don't know. This is all hyperbolic. And I came out and it was like, my life had changed. It's, it's an incredible movie. Um, mm-hmm. And it's one which I've been thinking about for. Uh, quite a bit recently, given everything that's going on yeah. with sort of my empire stuff. And I've been feeling in a very reflective mood, thinking of my journey to get here. Yeah. Um, and part of that journey was actually um, when I went for uh, sort of a full-time job at empire in 2017, I didn't uh, get the job. Mm. Um, I, I got to the final five. I didn't get the job, but sort of the discussions that came after that is when I sort of started freelancing for them. And that is, you know, now I'm sort of here. But even mm-hmm. before that, a couple of years before that, um, there was an Empire job going. Mm-hmm. And I had gotten 99% of my application done. I basically wanted to do was just do one little thing and percent. Mm-hmm. But all my self-doubt and all my just worry and, you know, antsiness and all that sort of stuff just came to the fore and one the day I was like you know what what if I get the job and I suck it and I have to, they have to 
you know, buy me after two weeks yeah. or if I go for the job and I don't get it, all that sort of stuff. And that, you know, ultimately won the day on that time. <clears throat> so I had to sort of get over the hump to even just apply. And I just, yeah. and, and I liken that to Miles's Leap of Faith, which is yeah. you know, just an incredible sequence from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, but just like you won't know until you know and yeah. just go for it. Mm. Um, and I've been reflecting on that scene and on that character with my journey recently. Um, mm. And I haven't really gotten to speak about Spider-Verse, even though I've loved it so much and I sort of talk about it on Twitter and everything else so much. Yeah. I haven't really gotten to talk about the film at length mm. um, with anybody um, on a, in the podcast form since it came out. Yeah. Uh, so all of, the, all of those reasons uh, sort of went into why I picked it for today. Yeah. So I that's think, a very long answer, but <laughs> no, it's a great answer. And I think it's um it's quite a beautiful answer as well because you really resonated with that character and were able to apply it within your own life and kind of give yourself some ex- an extra push, some courage. Um yeah. in you know, getting yourself over the line. And we all have those moments. And I was saying, like, I don't know why I get a bit emotional, like <laughs> watching it sometimes. <laughs> There's some emotional bits, and it's like, Rachel, it's a cartoon. Like, why? <laughs> no, don't ever say that I, I think know, animation but... has gotten to the level and this is another great example of it the form has gotten to a level where to say it's a cartoon and only for kids is reductive yeah um, cool. yeah you know, these whether it's animation or live action this, this is an art form which should be respected as such mm. and given spider-verse especially the way this film pushes animation um pushes the limits of animation to a new level mm. and tries to innovate in that sphere um, in addition to everything that it's doing on a story level is incredible. Um, yeah. It's something which uh, is going to sort of be a reference point for many artists in that realm, I think, going forward in the next decade and beyond. Yeah. Um, and the great Stan Lee um, said that Spider-Man should be played by anyone of all races. And there's a beautiful quote at the end of the movie as well, as, as well as this being his last kind of like um, cameo appearance in a Marvel uh, film. I just felt like it had such a, a a beautiful message to kind of like send out there, like as long as you're kind of being a good person and, and being honourable, then you are the real superheroes of the world and that's why everyone or a lot of kids as well me myself can relate to miles because it was just like you know he was such a re- relatable character um and a nice kid was able to become this superhero in the midst of the film yeah it's one of the best stanley cameos oh. uh, ever um it's, it's fantastic and mm-hmm. that quote is great and you know we've known that about spider-man for a while And the other movies that we've had have spoken to that in a sense, Mm. but Miles is the purest manifestation of that, of that quote. Um, And I love this film for taking all the history that we've had with Spidey Mm-hmm. which is part of the reason why I and I think many others weren't as hyped for it because we're getting another Spider-Man film again. Yeah, but it yeah. it's all that Spider-Man history and makes it resonate in a new way. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just fantastic. And yeah, this, Spider-Man is special because he's not special. And again, yeah. you were right in that he chooses to help people. He has great power. He chooses to help people with it. And therefore anyone can be Spider-Man. And the way they boil Spider-Man's essence uh, down to, you know, it's, they boil boil Spider-Man as a character down to his pure essence. And again, Miles is the perfect manifestation of that. Mm. Um, And I'll just, I'll never forget the, just what you feel at certain points in this movie. Not only the, the leap of faith, but for me, I always come back to that final swing through the city. Mm. Um, like it's very, very rare for me that I get a feeling in the moment that this movie is perfect. I'm watching a perfect movie right now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't explain what I felt watching that movie for the first time. Watching it's a that good movie film. for the first it's a good time, film movie. I, I was almost in tears. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did. 
There was a few. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Mantis are hard to come by for me. I'll just say. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, nah, it's, it was really, it's a really special movie. I'll never get tired of, of watching it. Um, it's, I just love it. It's incredible. One of my favorite parts of watching the movie is when um, the uncle is revealed as like the henchman right. and the suspense that's kind of built up around that in that moment. I think they just done that. Like it was so well done that, and obviously like the uncle doesn't realize that's his nephew and blah, blah. And then when he does, it like tries to retract and then gets killed and whatever. But it was just like, why was I this scared? I was watching the animation. I was like really <laughs> genuinely scared for like, oh my God, get out of there. Um, and that seems to be one of my favorite scenes um, in the movie. What about yeah. you? Yeah, no, I, I love that scene. Um, I, Mahersh Lali is just a fantastic actor. Um, He's the man. And he gives that, that, that scene such emo- emotion and resonance that you, you can't help but just... It, it just comes through on screen in such a powerful way. Yeah. Um, and I love that with only a few scenes, the way they set up that dynamic between Miles and his uncle Aaron um, yeah. is so powerfully done. Because on the one hand, you got his father, again, beautifully played um, and just beautifully executed character. Yeah. He's putting all these expectations on him. But then you got Uncle Aaron. Mm. who Miles likes hanging out with because Uncle Aaron had, puts no expectations on him at all. Mm. And that just the position between those two characters is just so beautifully played, which culminates in that beautiful scene before the leap of faith mm. where you get Miles' dad talking to him through the door, oh. um, which Again. is just, you know, right. I, I mean, your, your reaction is exactly what I was feeling in the cinema for the first time <laughs> watching it. Well, I still feel watching it now. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, just to know that he is loved and that he's got his own spark and he's got to do it at his own, pa- his own pace. Mm. It's only once Miles hears that and he stops putting so much pressure on himself mm. um, that he's able to fully access his powers yeah. and seize his destiny, which is another thing um, which I relate back to me because as someone, and <laughs> I shouldn't do it and I'm trying to do it as much as I do, but as a black person, a, a rare black person in this field who's managed to get to the level that I've gotten to, there's a certain amount of pressure that I feel um, to be some sort of an example for mm-hmm. others and to pay it forward as much as I can, all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out how not to, how to put enough pressure on myself that I'm delivering, delivering high quality work Mm. but not put so much pressure on myself that it's stunting my creativity. Because mm-hmm. there have been times when I've gotten on, over the line and I, be, I become more stressful because I'm too stressed. <laughs> um, there's a fine balance that you have to hit. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, I, I liken that to that, 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 I liken that feeling to Miles and what he's going through for much of this film. Um, he has to just relax a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Until he can sort of fully access uh, his skill set. So, so yeah. yeah, all of that stuff resonates for me too. No, and, and I love that as well. And it is difficult, especially when you do get into these positions to keep it real and still be true to yourself, but also try to leave the door open to let people through and, and be that example. And also sometimes the pressure of like, try not to make mistakes because you don't want to mess it up for the person that comes after you. That's a lot. And it's like, when sometimes you're just not allowed to be you and, and to mess up when you can and to just be your authentic self sometimes. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's cool. Um, I and think that's, that comes from maybe the, the African heritage as well. Like, you know, there's this, like, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to, be above and beyond. And so I think that extra pressure can sometimes be stifling um, at times. And so that's where I'm sure you you saw the connection and you could relate to Miles's. Um, Absolutely. And that's character. such an important thing, being your authentic self. Because mm. um, I, you know, especially in the nine years that I've been doing this, I occupy a lot of white spaces. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of different hats you have to wear. There's a lot of, you know... Code switching, honey. A lot of code switching. You know, what level of me can I bring to such and such? Um, and it's such a funny thing. Like, the only... The, the first couple of podcasts I did for Empire, 
I was really not good because <laughs> I was trying to fit. And I had done playing you podcasts before, yourself. but I put, not only, not only had I put all this pressure on myself and because I've done podcasts before, but Empire is one of the biggest podcasts in our industry. It's, cool. got, it's won awards, it's won all these things. I admire everyone, which I admire everyone I'm doing this podcast with so much. Yeah. And to say that I cracked the bed is an understatement. Mm. I, I had a massive panic attack actually after the second one that oh. I did. Um, yeah, because I was like, I, 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 still, I, still, I still get to this mindset, like if I do one thing bad, then I'm never going to get hired by Empire again. They're never going to yeah. email me again. That's it. My career is over. And I had that in like a massive way after the second podcast I did. Um, it was only after I figured out that I could be more of my authentic self on an Empire podcast and they would to, they would be res- receptive to that. And mm. the wider audience would really, really be receptive to that. And that I could be Exactly. It was only then that I could, that, that, that it clicked and I began getting a lot better at the podcast um, mm. and at everything else. And I'm trying to bring that, level into my writing as well it's easier to do it, i think in speech but in yeah. writing um i t- especially for me g- given my you know background and how i came up and how i generally tend to write it's more formal um but i'm trying to mm. i'm trying to especially with my column try and infuse it with more of my authentic voice um because i think yeah. that you know they 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 came to you they want you they're reading you for a reason um and it's not, to, yeah, exactly. not because you sound like everybody else, it's because you sound like you. And you have to bring that into all facets of your work. And I'm trying to do that as well. Yeah, which I love. I'm here for that. Um, <laughs> going back to that scene when you were talking about um, when his dad is talking to him outside of the room and he's just giving him like kind of a pep talk and just really showing a vulnerable side that I think black dads are not, we're not often seen. On, on screen like that and so for me when I was watching it I just felt like oh this is, this is a really nice dad you know <laughs> like we don't you know usually the dads are absent and or they're depicted in like more of a negative way or just stereotypical whereas this was just like a loving dad who just wants the best for his son um and it was just really nice to see that like and just to show that vulnerability and then it allowed him to be a bit more vulnerable and like tap into his superpower um and I think he needed to see his dad like that because obviously his dad's a cop and is you know used to being very strong and so even at the end when he runs up to him he's on the phone and he was just like hangs up and just hugs him like as super as spider-man sorry um (laughs) it just all of those little bits were just for me like so heartwarming yeah, no, you are 1,000% right on Black Dads. Um, it's very rare that we get to see them in that sort of light. Um, and mm. it was really, really beautifully done. Uh, that that scene in particular is great, but even their banter sort of early on in the film and mm. the, the way uh, the dad sort of, you know, <laughs> uh, not only the dad jokes, but the way he sort of thinks about, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 way, the way he thinks about heroism as a whole um, is yeah. really sort of fun and really, really interesting. And he has that line, with, with great ability comes great accountability, which is always something <laughs> that makes me laugh. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's so innovative in so many ways, uh, the film. Um, mm. And gives us so much of what we've been wanting to see for a while from not only superhero stories, but mm. from black stories as well. Um, yeah. And, you know, I was, and I'm contemplating writing about it still, but just in terms of just the way black characters are animated, I, mm. I really, I really enjoyed soul, but there's this discussion in our community about soul and how a lot of black characters, a lot of black lead characters keep getting, transmuted into you know different shapes and different animals and whatnot you don't get any of that with spider of us um yeah. so that's just one more thing that it's great at um mm. so yeah i just think i just think it's, it's the standard by which a lot of stuff should be measured going forward um the animation the voice work the story the music mm-hmm. um you know the voice work i mean oh, how, how, how like just just in terms of just oh, in terms of our introduction to miles the yeah having him just sing along to 
uh, to Sunflower is a perfect yeah. introduction because, and that's exactly how we act at certain points. Obviously, mm, with yeah. me, I'm perfectly in tune all the time. Miles is not. <laughs> time. Of um, course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm exactly the same. I've got Miles. Yeah. Um, um, I also love the biggie, you know, the when they play. Oh, the yes. Movie, like, like, this is, this yeah. is. This is it's very automatically <laughs> head bopping. Like I, I watched that in IMAX and I heard that. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was like, yes. <laughs> it's so great. You just it's add so the great. level of suave and, and coolness to it. I was like, yeah, this is this is what we do. Yeah. Exactly. This, this is what. So and, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see more of the character. I'm obviously, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big into my games as well. So I'm very excited about the new Miles Wilds yes, games. Yes, I saw out, that. This week. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think really he is the future of Marvel in a big way. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we've got this animated film. The sequel is going to be coming out in a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, he's about to break into the game world in a big way. Mm. And I think, you know, Marvel should introduce him to the MCU sooner the better. Um, yeah. Because there's a real thing for that character now. And I think if you don't do that, you're just leaving money on the table, quite frankly. A lot mm -hmm. of my money, that's for damn sure. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I just, I'm very interested to see sort of as many iterations of this character as possible. I think he's fantastic. And just to see, again, you know, the fact that anybody can be Spider-Man mm. has been a facet of the character for a while. Mm. But we've never really seen that as black and brown people yeah. um, on screen before. Mm. until Spider-Man is into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Um, which, again, is the manifestation of that idea. Um, yeah. It's one thing having that idea. It's another thing seeing that idea in yeah. matter of speaking flesh and blood. And yeah. that is what Spider-Verse gave us in a big way. And, of course, he is, you know, biracial. His dad's black. His mom's Latino, uh, Puerto Rican. And I remember at the time there was a bit of a... A sitch with the Morales because it was uh, that's not the dad's surname and the dad's surname is Davis and the mum's mm. um, and obviously there's this thing in the Spanish community where the child usually does or somehow take the mother's maiden name and but I think that caused a little bit of confusion and I think this is where people are just like because when you don't have that character or those characters to hold on to when you finally get one you then start thinking but then why did you do this? And why did you do that? <laughs> and so it caused a little bit of confusion. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. I love the character and I love the film. Um, but can you understand why there was some confusion there? Yeah, I can understand a little bit um, of confusion for sure. Um, and, you know, you're right in that because we've only sort of gotten one or two or three of these sorts of characters, mm -hmm. more pressure is... Yeah given to them to get everything right and to adhere to everyone yes. on the 100% sort of, you know, fealty level, all that sort of stuff. Exactly. Um, and again, I get that to a point. Um, mm. I think people, the creators behind it, should, should they be more attentive? Maybe. But I think those sort of <laughs> criticisms and pressure yeah. will be alleviated the more black and brown characters we see on screen and the more black and brown stories are told, on screen, there's still much more we can do with that. I know, you know, to the outside looking in, for some people, it would have massively improved over the last few years and that's not yeah. necessarily wrong. But if you still yeah. look at the wider scheme of things mm -hmm. and look at the actual numbers compared to everything else, we're still coming off way worse. Yeah. Um, there, we're nowhere close to parity um, when it comes to uh, representation on screen in many many different ways mm. um and i think once those numbers start to change for the better we're not going to be hearing so much uh of the criticisms which you're talking about with uh morales and other films and other stuff as well yeah no i i, I totally agree with you one of the things that i do love about <clears throat> this smiles or this spider-man is the fact that he's in brooklyn and he very much like encompassed being a young black kid 
in Brooklyn, wearing the Air Jordans, the music, the hoodie. <laughs> I felt like the hoodie had like a double meaning as well because, you know, with the Trayvon Martin and everything kind of leading up into that point, it was just like, he represented so much just as that like one <laughs> character. Um, yeah. And so I think that's why these characters, just like you mentioned, we need a few more. So then people are not like holding on to them with such viciousness. Do you know what I mean? And like, yep. this is ours. He needs to be executed. <laughs> like um, and also because I think, you know, having the Latino and black, I sometimes feel like these filmmakers are a little bit nervous. And so they kind of want to make please everyone and tick, a, tick all the boxes. So no one feels left out in a way. And although like somewhere like Brooklyn is a melting pot, so of course you're going to, you're going to get that. And it's a lovely marriage in the two. Um, but I think because we've only got a few there, they're kind of fearful of the freedom that they can do with these characters. And so when the Black Panthers and the Mars Morales has come along, it's like a huge deal, but you know, just like you, I hope we get to the point where we've got plenty to pick from and enjoy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it just goes to show, I mean, they deserve even more credit mm. for having pulled these things off. The, the Ava DuVernay's, the Ryan Coogler's, the Peter Ramsey's, these are the forerunners mm. of the new sort of movement. These are the guys who we are looking forward to. These, these are the first um, that we will refer to mm. when once, hopefully, in the next couple of decades or so and beyond, mm this is more of a regular thing and we're not still talking about representation, yeah. but they deserve even more credit for having pulled this off with the amount of pressure that mm. they have. Um, because any other Marvel movie, any other Marvel director, all they have to worry about is making a good movie. Yes. When it comes to Black Panther, they have to worry about making a good movie. They have to worry about making sure the representation is right. They have to worry about making sure Africa is displayed in the right way. That's mm -hmm. worry about this, 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 that, and the other. And mm -hmm. the fact that they still they do they did all of that in a big way, in the way that galvanized the entire community around the world mm -hmm. is just incredible. It's yeah. incredible. Um, but you know, again, we are working towards a situation where there won't be a situation for kids growing up today as it was for us growing up in terms of we didn't get to see all these things growing up. We're only sort of getting it now into our sort of, you know, mid-adulthood. Yeah. But just thinking about kids growing up today and then getting to see Black Panther at seven years old, yeah. then getting to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse at five years old, getting, them getting to see themselves, people who look like the characters we, we've known and loved for a while, but yeah. they actually yeah. look like us. Mm. It's a really transformative thing. And it's a beautiful thing just to think about that. Um, and the more characters, the more examples we have of that for the people growing up today to look forward to, it just makes me really, really excited for the future. Definitely. Um, I was listening to uh, the Empire podcast with uh, that you guys did a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. And of course right. you picked uh, Black Panther. And I don't know, I just got a bit emotional. I was just like this... <laughs> Why is this so emotional listening to it? And I don't know if it was because it was, um, we'll never get to see another one of his films uh, or experience his talent like that. And it just like genuinely broke my heart. But I think you look, all of you done a great job in uh, talking about the films that you chose and I love them all. And it was just like, it was a real testament to him, the actor that he was and, and, the catalog of work that he left behind because it just felt so specific. It felt so, he, he picked each role specifically and um, it just had such weight behind each role. Um, and yeah, so I just, I just want to say thanks for that because I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. And nah, I, talking about Chadwick helped with my grief over Chadwick. Um, mm. Cause yeah. I remember waking up that night just randomly and looking at my phone and it was like 15 minutes after the news had broken. And I, I mean, Black Panther was a film that meant a lot to me in mm -hmm. a big way. And Chadwick was a big part of that. Not only 
in playing that character to Chala, but as I said on the pod, the way he represented us mm-hmm. and re- yeah. represented that film and Marvel over that entire press tour and the way he led that cast and crew mm-hmm. was a special thing. Yeah. And such a leader. You know, I, I just, <laughs> just even looking at the last of the couple of months and seeing how many black people, how many blackness have put, have showed their whole ass. Um, just thinking about <laughs> if, you know, just one thing going wrong on that Black Panther press tour and how that would derail all this momentum because everything yeah. would be on that. But Chadwick never let that happen. The way he spoke for us and was just yeah. the best representation of us was a really special thing. Mm. And, you know, in the same way in which when you see Morgan Freeman on screen or hear his voice, yeah. there's an inherent wisdom. Yeah. I mean, it's because he's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> he's got to inherent, go <laughs> Exactly. There's an inherent dignity and regality with Chadwick mm. um, that made him perfectly suited for T'Challa. Um, yeah. It's very, very hard. I mean, I know actors are very, very skilled and they're very good at what they do, but I think it's very, very hard to fake the regality of an African king mm. if you don't have a lot of those qualities in yourself already. And okay. Chadwick absolutely did. Uh, yeah. And that is part of the reason why um, that character resonated just in a big way. And I think Marvel knew that. I think that they were prepping him to be the next sort of, you know, big pillar of the MCU with mm. Iron Man and Captain America departing. I think it was all set up for that. Yeah. And I was very, very excited to see where they were going to go with it. Um, mm. Now I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, it's it's, I, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky it's one. It's a really really tricky one. I don't want anybody really to be discussing it at this time. Mm. Part of the reason why I got annoyed at certain entertainment outlets who were asking the questions not hours after the news broke, which I thought was heinous. Um, but yeah, um, he's it's not a role, it's not a character, it's not a person, it's not an actor that's going to be forgotten anytime soon. Mm. Um, He is sensational, that character is sensational, and whatever happens with Black Panther 2, um, we're going to remember that for sure. Mm. And yeah, he just, um, and I think for everyone that just kind of looked back and was like, oh my God, he was going through all of this while doing all of these movies, like... I get a migraine and I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> like, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, I've got, I've got to check myself because clearly I've got my game, you know? And it was just little things like that that just made you feel like he was such an inspiration in that way of like checking yourself and pushing yourself to be better, do better and the representation. And we keep talking about this. I think 2020, that should be the hashtag of the year because... <laughs> representation is so important and key and um like you said he knew that and he knew the weight that that carried and he did that with such grace and i think that's definitely going to be part of his legacy that he leaves behind and that will inspire people not even just kids but just people in general um which i love in this film there was a few characters quite a few cameos as well you have zoe kravitz who plays jane um and obviously she's black and Mary Jane is supposed to be, you know, a white character. How do you feel about different races voicing different races, if that makes any sense? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Um, this is a conversation which keeps popping up. You know, we mm-hmm. just had um, uh, Jodie Turner-Smith, the Queen of Slim Fame, oh. cast as Anne Boleyn in the upcoming TV series. People losing their um, shit about that. Yes, they are. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the, one of the criticisms which always pops up from people who don't like that sort of news um, is, you know, why can't a white person play Martin Luther King then or something like that? Um, and my response to that is very, very simple. Blackness is a key part of someone like Martin Luther King's identity. Mm. Um, But there is no reason why when the stories of James Bond or Anne Boleyn Mm. or Mary Jane are being told, 
mm. that they need to be Caucasian or need to be voiced by Caucasian uh, people. Mm-hmm. Um, and therefore, um, I'm okay with people like Zoe Kravitz voicing Mary Jane. I'm okay with Johnny Turner Smith um, playing Anne Boleyn. Mm-hmm. As Dev Patel recent displayed in David Copperfield, mm. um, that didn't seem to hurt that movie. Um, mm. And it's an approach which um, has been used a lot in theatre and it's been used in very, it's, it's, it's gotten great results. I mean, uh, David the Yellow is one person I know for sure uh, who has gotten awards off the back of such an approach. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Again, it's case dependent um, on whether the race is key to a person's identity and a key to a person's story. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this case, uh, therefore, I think I'm fine with it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. I totally agree. And as long as you're not um, showing offence or being offensive in any way, shape, or form, then each their own. I'm here for yeah. it. So if there was a scene that you had to direct people to who hadn't watched Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. What scene would it be and why? It's the leap of faith sequence. It would always be the leap of faith sequence. I, I mean, I mean, I, first of all, I'd admonish them for not having seen Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I know. I know. For, have a, good, to for a good seven minutes or so. <laughs> you know, it would just, it would just be that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it would be a strong recommendation to watch it from the beginning and do yeah. not skip ahead because the movie <laughs> is that good and every second is worth watching. Mm-hmm. And then they complain and detest you know, some more and then I direct them to the leap of faith sequence um, because on every single level, it's stunning. Um, mm-hmm. On an animation level, it's one of the most beautiful shots of the last five years or so when he's falling, but they invert the screen so it looks like he's rising. Amazing. Yeah. From yeah. the conception to the execution of that idea, it's mm-hmm. fantastic. The way in which, yes, he's taken a leap of faith, but he still has to, he's still clinging on to the window. And when he leaps off, the shards of the window break because he mm-hmm. has to, you know, still push himself mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. Just little touches like that are fantastic. Mm-hmm. The way in which it builds up. So you have the scene with the father through the door, which we've spoken about. Mm-hmm. Um, he then goes to Art May's house and they go to the spider cave. He designs his own costume. Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. The music, which is used, which I'm now mixed on because Little Wayne is one of the people, the black entertainers who has showed his whole ass recently. Um, yeah. But the we music <laughs> the music works in a big spectacular way it comes mm-hmm. in at the right time it's just a coalescence of so many of what so much of what the film does well in one scene um and it is by far the standout scene in a fantastic movie yeah yeah I totally agree that scene from um sorry about the fireworks <laughs> that scene from when he takes that leap of faith and becomes, you see his evolution and he goes to uh, the aunt's house and does his, gets his black suit and he's flying Mm -hmm. around. It was just such an uplifting scene. And although that might be giving away a bit of the film, it's just such a good medley of like scenes that come together to create this like euphoric feeling of, who he has become and who he's going to be going forward and how he's going to approach things. And so for me, I'll definitely probably um, direct people to that scene as well. It's got great music. I mean, the music is just so damn good. It's so annoying. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, no, that's, that's the one right there. Um, and, you know, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse 2, uh, obviously coming out in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. If there's anything that can top that, I mean, I'm I'm interested to see them try, but it will be a tall order because yeah, um, you know, I I I call the whole scene, I I call the whole movie perfect, but that scene in particular is the definition of perfection for me. I will never get yeah. tired of. It. And there's not a lot of places from Sky or Netflix you go on and they give them like five out of five, and that's one of the few films that you go on there and it's like five out of five, and it's like I'm so glad we all are all on the same page because this is such a good film. It really is. It really is. And to, again, take 
what I think was Spider-Man saturation and turn it into this sort of thing is just incredible. And therefore, the expectation level <laughs> is going to change. As I said, you know, my expectations for Spider-Verse 1 were like, yeah, I, I want to see Black Panther and Finch or Spider-Verse. You know, I'll see it. Yeah. Spider-Verse 2, the expectation level is through the roof. Yes. Through the sky. Yeah, um, and now I'm like so, coming with so much. I'm yeah. like, you've got to bring it because you brought it so hard the first time. Exactly. I believe in you. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I... I <laughs> My chips are all on Spider-Verse. I, <laughs> yeah. I, no. Let's do it. Can't wait. <laughs> me too. Well, that's it from me, Amon. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I wish you the absolute best. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. Really enjoyed having you on Black Ink Cinema podcast. <laughs>